Welcome to the Work Hard, Play Hard podcast. My name is Rob Murgatroyd, and I am a former doctor turned lifestyle entrepreneur. Each week, I interview some of the best minds on the planet on the science of achievement and the art of fulfillment. Today's episode is a mini-sode that we call Fried Dates with the Wife. In these mini-sodes, my wife Kim and I deconstruct the strategies that we've developed over the last decade to not only grow personally, but to turn our struggles into lessons and create fulfillment in all areas of our lives. Excuses are over. It's time to live. Let's dig into today's topic. All right, before we jump into this episode, I want to invite you to be considered for my Work Hard, Play Hard Mastermind by completing an application at workhardplayhardmastermind.com. So this mastermind is not like any mastermind you may have been to or heard of, I promise you. This mastermind is for six to seven figure entrepreneurs that are working too damn much and aren't taking the time to have amazing experiences around the world with an incredible tribe of people. So every 100 days or so, I drop you into new experiences that are specifically designed to elevate your thinking, to give you new ideas. Look, you get your best ideas not staring at a computer. And actually, this is the way high-level people really collaborate with each other. They do it over a glass of champagne, watching the sunset in the south of France. And we'll be doing things just like that. In fact, we'll be taking a vintage car ride through the French Riviera this summer. And we'll be truffle hunting in Florence in the fall, to name just a few of the experiences so that I can give you a feel for it. So if you are ready to do some fun stuff around the world and really, really want to level up your tribe in one shot, fill out an application at workhardplayhardmastermind.com. We'll jump on a call and we'll see if it's a good fit. All right, let's jump into today's episode. Well, Kimberly, I am a professional mover. (laughs) Murgatroyd, how are you on this uh, beautiful day sitting in our home with basically everything we own in boxes. By the way, do you know that I just packed all your coffee mugs? My coffee mugs? Yeah. Your coffee pot is going next. What am I supposed to do for coffee? Have an e-shot. You're going to survive it. We have like three days in this house where we will have no furniture. It'll look like a frat house with a, what's it called? Mattress on the floor and suitcases. And that's basic. And I have paper plates in paper cups. Well, let's unwind the clock here a little bit and let's talk about how we got to this stage of our life sitting here in boxes. Like where, if we, if you want to sort of like reverse engineer this, you know, there's a, uh, there's a saying you, uh, you, you see the glory and you don't know the whole story, right? Yeah. So as we are sharing this experience on the socials, um, there is a tremendous outpouring of love from people. And I think that, you know, when they, when they see that, you know, we're about to leave Atlanta, they know that we want to move to California. They know that we want to, you know, travel Europe. There is a, I don't even want to call it a must be nice kind of thing. I there because it, it's I have deleted. No, we haven't hit that part of it yet. I have. Well, <laughs> that's no, going to happen in a minute. I've deleted most of those people on yeah. on on the face on, on the Facebook. But what I am getting, I love that you call it the Facebook. You got to add the the. What I am getting is people that are saying. I'm tr- I'm trying to put this into words because I want to get the sentiment right. They're 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 saying things like someday. I hope to mm-hmm. do this too. There's yeah. like, that is like the, if I had to encapsulate all the different versions of that. And when I hear it, there's a part of me that wants to go, it, you know, it's a Tony Robbinsism. the road to someday leads to the village of nowhere. And there is a, you know, there is this part of us that, you know, knows that we want to have something, but just puts it in the someday bucket. And the someday bucket doesn't happen until you actually make a plan and reverse engineer Mm -hmm. it. And it's really interesting to have made that plan and be sitting here in the midst of chaos. You know, it's, it's an organized chaos. It's an exciting chaos, but it is a chaos, none the same. So there's many, many roads we can go down, but what road my love of my life, Mm -hmm. would you like to go down today with this? So we're moving today, right? Yeah, today. We're moving today. And 
The other day I was walking on my way to yoga and it kind of just dawned on me. We were in these boxes and, you know, be careful what you wish for kind of thing. Uh, We had just sold our bed frame because I'm like, if it's not coming to California and I can't give it away, I'm selling it. So I am like, it's like, let's make a deal in my house right now. And sold the bed. And for some reason, that piece just had me like, it was real. Like I literally sold the bed out from under us. And I was thinking, I was like, God, this started as a dream. And when I say this started as a dream, I mean 15 years ago. I don't mean like yesterday. We dreamed about this and we made it happen in like two months and look how fancy we are. No, this bitch has been going on for a long time. And it really started as a dream. And then it turned into a plan because then it actually started happening. And now we're actually doing it. And each one of those phases has different emotions attached to it, has different struggles attached to it. But the dream phase, I want to kind of focus on because that's where I feel like most people that are listening are probably in some level of that dreaming action phase. And there are three things that we shifted over the course of 15 years. Oh, just added another one in my brain. Sorry. There's going to be four. So I know Tony Robbins likes things in threes, but he's going to have to get over it for this episode. So there are four things. That- I feel like I was just inside your brain there for a second. It was really weird. I, did you get stuck? It's creepy in there. So there's four things that I think really shifted everything for us and took that dream that we've been posting on vision boards and talking about since the day we met that has actually made it happen. Okay, because I know a lot of you probably, well, at least I hope I'm not the only one that's had the same shit on my vision board for, you know, almost two decades. So there are three things. Now there's four, sorry. Well, before you say the three things, here's here's the The thing. The four things. The four things. things. Here's here's the thing that I I think is really important. Are you going to add a fifth thing? No, it's (laughs) it's that things take way longer than you think they're going to take. I don't know if that's being negative. I don't know if that's just not manifesting in the right way. But my experience is that sometimes if you fall into the category of somebody that, you know, is a dreamer, is a goal achiever, is, you know, type A personality, you, you know, you send that message out into the universe that I'm doing X, Y, and Z. And then in six months or 12 months, when it doesn't happen, you say, well, it was probably not for me or, well, why is this always so hard? Why? And, and, My experience in doing this particular thing is that it just takes way freaking longer than you think. But the lesson for me in this is how bad do you want it? And are you willing to go through what you need to go through to see this baby to the end? Are you willing to land this plane on the tarmac until it actually happens and not give up? I, and I think that is true. I think what takes so much time is to figure out which tools you need to make this happen. And that's what I really wanted to talk about today was what do I think, just me, because apparently I don't care about you, right? Uh, what do we think? What are the things that we did that really shifted when and shifted this from a dream to a, a reality? And so The first thing that I'm going to say is getting really, really honest. So you've got to get really, really honest with yourself about what you want. And in doing so, you're going to need to throw this idea around. So Robin, bring you back in state. How many of the last 15 years did you, I'm going to use the term waste, chasing building 10 offices in 10 years in some sort of chiropractic pipe dream that you were really not that excited about? I would say a good 10. Okay. So I would probably say seven or eight because I believe we we cut that dream around 2006 or so, something in there, maybe 2008, but many years, okay? It was many, many years that he was so focused this this, I'm going to do 10 offices. I'm going to open 10 chiropractic offices, make them profitable and sell them. And then I'm going to bank this amount of money and I'm going to go off and live in California. Okay. So California was always the end result. He always knew what he wanted at the end, but the journey, how to get there, 
is where he was stuck. And he was so stuck on this journey that he couldn't see anything else. So much so that we did a, and we may have talked about this before. So if I'm repeating myself, I'm sorry. So this is part of old age, right? I'm Mm -hmm. at 40 now. I just start to repeat myself. We did a, uh, what do you call it? A psychic reading, okay? With a medium named Char Margolis. Oh, this just took a right turn. Go ahead. (laughs) No, you're going to love this. And I remember Rob doing this reading and it's over the phone. She's been on CNN. She's a very high profile medium. She's really, really good. And we've done many and we'll do, maybe we'll do a podcast on that another day. But in this particular one, she's sitting there and she's saying, I don't know. I think you're going to do something creative. I think you're going to do something with travel. I think you're going to... And she's going down this whole road and he was so closed off to anything except this 10 offices in 10 years and moved to California that he wasn't even listening. And he was thinking in his head about how he, what he was going to ask. And then at the end, she goes through this entire thing that honestly didn't sound like him. You're going to do something so creative. I think she actually was one of the first people to talk about your voice and like how you had a voice for radio or something like that. I, I think, I think saw, she said, I have a face for radio. No, voice. She was on the No, audience. I'm joking. Oh, so oh, you get face, it? Oh, you get it? For radio. You get it, honey? Down. All right. So my point in this is at the end of this reading, she said, is there any question you want to ask me? And he goes, yeah, I do. So I have this plan to do 10 offices in 10 years and then sell them and then move to California and then da, 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 da. And she said, yeah, so you're going to get to California. It's going to be later than your timeline and it's not going to be in the way that you think. You know, it's funny. Our uh, our mutual friend, Sarah Pendrick, uh, Girl Talk Network is her handle on VIG. Uh, she's one of our mastermind members. Uh, she posted something recently and it was your one word horoscope recommendation. And I, you know, obviously you go to your own and, uh, for Virgo, which I am September 16th is my birthday, which by the way, f- random fun fact, it's the most popular, it's the most common birthday in the world. Um, because if you back it up to nine months, it's Christmas Eve, but I digress. The one word for me, and you're going to laugh. I can't wait. Allow. Oh uh, yeah. See, wouldn't that be interesting? Allow. Allow. So, you know, this is, This is what I'm saying about getting really honest with yourself because Rob, if you had gotten really honest with yourself when you started this and this 10 offices in 10 year plan was laid out for you and you went, yeah, so I don't actually like what I'm doing. I don't actually like managing people. I don't like to have one office, let alone have 10 of them. There was nothing in that plan that you actually enjoyed except the check at the end. Well, look, I mean, Sometimes uh, people who fall into this category, and I'm going to speak. I'm going to speak. I'm going to speak in third person to uh, detach myself from this. But I think sometimes that people who find themselves in this situation do it in the way that I did it, um, which I clearly don't recommend now. But do it in the way I did it because they see a path, quote unquote, is the the air quotes around the word see. You know, they see a path that they're like, okay, well, this is what I want. This is what's in front of me. So I'm just going to force it and will it. But the universe, if you're betting on the wrong horse in your path, the universe will go, no, I'm not giving it to you because that is not the way you need to do it. So you're wasting all of this energy on trying to accomplish something when the universe is going, okay, be open, allow be open to something else because that isn't the right path. And I did not want to hear it because I am not the kind of guy that can, well, I wasn't, I think I am more now, but I wasn't the kind of guy at that stage of my life where I was willing to be open to possibility of the unknown of what the vehicle was that was going to allow me to get there. For example, if you would have said to me back then, network marketing is going to be a huge vehicle to get you there, I would have, I would have laughed at you. If you would have said to me that you're going to do a mastermind and travel uh, around the world with um, seven-figure people, you would have said, what's I would have said, what's a mastermind and um, how? why am I in the midst of these people? But here's what I really want you to see, okay? So- Again, the first thing is this authenticity. It's being, it's finding out who you truly are and being honest with yourself. That's the hardest person to be honest with is yourself, I think. 
about who you really are, what you really, really want out of fear of judgment or whatever else is around you. But if I look back now, hindsight, of course, is 2020. You must have hired, I don't know, 20 docs that came in, 20 doctors that each was worse than the next through that period of time where you wanted this process. But at the same time, you're going on these events to learn how to do this, these chiropractic events, and you're creating your own where one day you're like, hey, we should do a smaller group of high-level people that all want to do this thing, and let's do it in Morocco, right? And so you, flew, you, you had four couples or whatever, three or four couples fly to Morocco. We talked about this on a previous podcast, but that was effectively your first work hard, play hard mastermind. And all the doors were opening up there, yet all the doors were being slammed shut when you were trying to do this 10 office in 10 year thing. So So, how do you see the lesson for people? So the lesson I see for people is that you've got to get really, really honest. So like right now, if you're on a path and you're doing it just because you believe it's going to end and, you know, lead you to the promised land, but you're, you're getting wall after wall after wall, and it's not filling your soul. You're not passionate about it. You're not enjoying it. And it just doesn't seem to be working and you can't, like when, and there's something else that's piquing your interest, have a conversation with yourself and say, is this what I really want? Or is there a better way? Because we wasted, out of, I'm, I'm saying it's the 15-year overnight success. I'm going to say six of those 15 years, seven of those 15 years were, were wasted on trying to chase this other dream. So the tool in the toolbox is If we had sat back at that time and had a real, like you came to me, so a perfect example of how this will never happen again. You came to me, what, a month ago? And you were like, I think I'm going to scale this business to a $7 billion business and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, Rob, you don't like employees. You don't like that. You don't want to have a physical location. You don't like employees. Like that's actually not what you enjoy. Here's the, uh, the magic in that though. Because my default behavior, okay, so I'm going to back up. I had, uh, I had the opportunity to hang out with uh, Jay Shetty in LA um, at- uh, Chris- Oh, hold on. Let me pick up that name you just dropped. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we had dinner uh-huh. um, and he, he looked with at me- With 40 other people He looked mastermind. at me in his piercing steel blue eyes and said, <laughs> oh Rob, I, I want to talk to you. Let me hold your hand. And- um, Where is this going? He said, don't judge- your dreams by the room that you're in. So in other words, if you're in a room of investors, you do a gut check and you're like, well, maybe I should be an an investor. If you're in a room with people who are actors, maybe I should be an actor or hedge funds or whatever it is. And it's very, very easy to do that. And I'm, I am, you may, you know, those of you listening may not fall into that category and you may not be swayed easily. I am. I look at successful people And I work really, really hard to try and model them. And sometimes that sort of thing can, can boomerang, um, and go the other way. So the point, the point is that when you said that to me, I recognized my faux pas. Did I say it? I'm going to France now. So I'm trying to get that right. I recognized my faux pas. I recognized my mistake. And my mistake was that I was chasing 10 offices in 10 years and something I didn't want to do. So when you brought that up, it made me realize that I don't want to do that again. So I was like, you know what? She's right. I don't want, that is not my dream. But, the, but my default was still there to do that. Yeah, so I'm, inter- def- I'm interrupting the pattern. Yeah, because this is the new tool in the toolbox is what I'm saying. So it took us seven years before, but this time it took us a seven minute conversation. Yeah, I think you're okay, right. Okay, so that's right. the first one. So getting really, really, really do a gut check. Is this what you want? being true to yourself and authentic. The second thing is managing your mindset around this. So is everything going to go perfect? No, it's not. Are you going to have some wall kicking moments? Sure. But the way I feel that these moments should go is it should be like a path, right? Where it's like a choose your own adventure. You can go down three different roads and one of them is going to have Godzilla on it. The other one's going to have a fire and the other one's going to be a little bumpy, but you're eventually going to get there. So depending on what road you're on, you're going to have to manage that mindset regardless. And this is something that we were not implementing back, I would say, 
before the last four or five years, right? So affirmations, manifestation, we went to Tony Robbins, we did you know, all the hoopla, we wrote down our dreams and we're gonna talk about manifesting in a second, but on that one, but we were not actively daily manifesting everything, right? So maybe we did it at the event, maybe we thought about it a little bit, we talked about it at night, but it wasn't in the same stream of consciousness that you're doing it now. And I think that's a huge, huge thing. So you can't manifest something though that's not clear. Because I think that if you did that, if you, when the way you're doing your meditations now, Rob, you're, you have a very clear picture in your head of what you want and you're doing your meditation and manifestation on that picture. I feel like if you had that 10 offices in 10 years to use as an example, I think your own gut wouldn't allow you to actually manifest that because I think you would have been like calling bullshit on yourself. I think you're right. You know, part of the, uh, I, I won't go in in this podcast with um, all of the details that are associated with sort of the way I'm manifesting these things these days. But I will say that one of those elements is me being able to visualize very clearly what it is that I'm after and being able to think greater than my current environments. So I'll use an example. One of the things that I'm working on now is to, you know, I'm looking as I'm recording this, I'm looking up in our kitchen and I've got a picture of a guy with a surfboard in his hand, right? It's in uh, Hermosa Beach. It's on our dream. He's our, literally, our board he's literally carrying the, the surfboard on uh, Hermosa. Is that Hermosa or Manhattan? That's Manhattan. All right. So he's, he's carrying the surfboard on Manhattan Beach. And it's not enough for me to say that I want to move to Manhattan Beach and surf. Now what I do is I visualize getting in my car, driving to the, uh, driving to the ocean, jumping in the water, feeling the cold water. I know what the wetsuit looks like. I know what the grain of sands on the, on the surfboard feels like. I know what it feels like to get out when the sun hits me. I have a great level of detail associated with it. Had I done that with areas that I didn't really want, like 10 offices in, in 10 years, it would be very, very difficult for me to do. And so when I come up with different things that I want to manifest now, and I've got this list of them, when I can't get out of what, I'm, what I just now in this moment made up as the gray zone, um, I'm not a great visualizer. It takes me a while to get things. I'm much more auditory. Kim is highly visual. It's like talking to somebody with sign language when you talk to her. Like everything, <laughs> like you don't even need to hear her voice. You can just watch her hands. She's highly <laughs> visual, right? But- when I have trouble visualizing something, I have to ask myself why. And it's usually because there's not emotion that's tied to what it is that I'm visualizing. And what the emotion does is for me, the emotion is the litmus test as to whether or not you really want it. Because if you can't get behind emotionally, like I'm not a sports guy. And you know, like if I'm visualizing me playing cricket, um, I was wondering what sport you were going to go. You with. know, I, I'm not going to get super emotional in it, um, and it's going to be really, really hard, and I'm going to get stuck. And I think that it's the difference between going from an intellectual understanding to a heartfelt, much more visceral understanding. So, you know, that's the that's what I'm talking about with your mindset. Because had you done this prior, you would not. You, it, this would have quickened. Yeah. So now it's a tool in your toolbox. So anything now that comes in as an idea or something you really, really want, you can sift that out pretty easily through a couple of meditation sessions because it just won't connect. Okay. Right? Don't you feel like that's like a quicker tool? Now that you know what it feels like and know what it is and know how to harness it, it's these, I believe, this is also what I believe. Like if you look someone, look at someone like, let's say our friends, Chris and Lori, it took them a while to build their success, but now it's like it's like a snowball of success because their toolbox is so filled with these tools that they can sift this thing so much quicker and the bad ideas go out the window, the good ideas stay, and they know how to build. It's not because of all the other stuff. It's because I think they put these pieces in place. And I think these pieces take a while to figure out and take a while to build. Yeah, and I think it's easy for us to, to throw the pendulum on one end. Uh, I, I know certainly for me it is. So when I think about like visualizing, 
you know, certain things. If I have trouble visualizing it, yes, it may go in the category of this is not something I want. But also, I have to give myself some grace and some time to be able to develop that vision. I'll give you an example there. Houses are not cheap in California, right? Oh, really? Yeah. So the one that I'm looking at that I think would be really cool for us is around, uh, I think it's about $4 million, somewhere in that range. Three to five million is really the range of something. Oh, hold on. That I Let want. me go get that out of the safe. Right. So when Just I kidding. think about that, when I first did it, there was this immediate reaction that my body had that was like, you'll never have that. That's way out of your league, et cetera. But it was something that emotionally I really, really wanted. And it was really tough for me to visualize. Now, because I feel like I can taste it, I, I can absolutely visualize what it's like to come home from that surfing experience that I just mentioned um, and sit on the rooftop and watch the sunset. Okay, so I'm going to go get something real quick because we uncovered in this packing process the, like, what did we decide? Like 2005, 2006 date I'll, with I'll Destiny? Ex- I'll explain it. Yeah, go ahead. So um, for those of you that are Tony Robbins fans... Um, we went to date with Destiny pretty much, I think right, right around the time we first started dating. I'm not even sure that we were married. And the process of one of the exercises in that event is to create a poster. And on that poster, it has your purpose, um, your values, and your top uh, four one-year goals. And so uh, as you do, when you move, you unearth uh, things that you've had years ago. And so Kim pulls out this piece of paper, uh, this, um, I'm going to call it a poster board is what it is. It's a poster board that you made. And at the top of the poster board, it says for my mission statement, mission statement. So let me read this because again, okay. So he's always had the end goal of California. That was clear. He's always known that, but he didn't know the path. So even though he wanted 10 offices, 10 years, which I actually think is somewhere on here, open next office. Yeah. Somehow his soul, when he wrote the mission statement, actually knew the path. He just wasn't allowing himself to listen to it. So are you ready? Ready. The purpose of my life is to know thyself and be thyself and to enjoy all my travels around the world and to share those experiences with others. I mean, like it's literally it's literally what I'm doing now. But literally your top four one-year goals. The first one is to travel for six weeks, but it had nothing to do with anybody else. And two are financial goals related to the clinic. And the next one is open the next office. So your purpose, there was, your, a, there was a disconnect. your actual mission statement and your goals We're not have nothing alignment. to do with each other, but your mission statement is what you're doing now, 13 years later. This I is mean, gonna, how amazing is this? This is going to help a lot of people. Um, and I think the people it's going to help is probably the people that are in their thirties. Yeah. I mean, so- Because if, that, that was my thirties. That was your third. Well, it's going to help anybody wherever they are right now, gain these tools now. So the two other things is, you know, action, right? So you can sit on the couch and manifest whatever you want. But if you're not willing to take the action, stop shooting yourself on what you should do this and I should do that. If it's not in alignment with what you really want, start taking action on the path that feels in your gut like the right path for you. Well, I'll tell you I'll tell you this too. When I when you put me back in state and I think about taking the action on those things in my life, it was such a it was such a push for me to think about going to the bank to get the financing, to think about interviewing the doctors and and training them because I wasn't passionate about it. it. I didn't like it. So, you know, right now, today, next week, we're going to Monaco, right? And it's fucking hard right now. We're moving. Well, we're going to Monaco for your mastermind. For the mastermind, but it's really hard. I mean, we're packing up a place and we're starting a mastermind and we're packing up for California. We're packing up, but all of these things we're doing, as stressful as they are, that you and I are executing at such a high level right now because we're passionate and excited about it. And when you pick something that you're not, yes, you can't get your ass off the couch because you don't want to. Yeah. So- you know, here's the thing about action. For so many years with, so he never did 10 offices in 10 years, okay? He did one office in 25 years. Thank God, because then I'd have 10 of them to sell right now. (laughs) Right, for sure. So at the end of 2018, we decided to sell the clinic. And part of this taking action is taking risk. Be willing to take risk and be willing 
to be uncomfortable, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. We knew when we sold the clinic that it was going to be a hit to our income. Thank God we had built a network marketing business with residual income because that has been the the game changer for us. But we still lost an income. That was uncomfortable. It was a risk. All of these things were a risk and very, very uncomfortable. And it's part of growth. It's part of taking action. So be willing to take that action, get uncomfortable and get a mentor to to guide you. Get a, like get in the right mastermind, find the right coach, the right mentor that can guide you through this transition. And the last thing is to celebrate your wins along the way. And you know, not to throw you under the bus again, but this is another one that my my wonderful husband is, he is amazing in so many areas. I have to kind of cattle prod him sometimes to celebrate small wins because and they're not the big win and they're not the outcome. The journey is not his gift. <laughs> he likes the end result. He doesn't necessarily love the journey, but he's getting so much better. So celebrating these tiny wins along the way, whatever they are. Let's say you want to sell 100 courses. You're doing an online course. You want to sell 100 courses. You sell one. Guess what? You sold one. High five yourself. High five the universe because the universe is conspiring to give you exactly what you're manifesting, but you're gonna have to be a good friend to that universe and high five it. Because if you don't, and you don't acknowledge the win, that's like a big middle finger to the universe. Let me tell you how much my wife believes in this process. When we would get money into the office, she would do the money dance. Now I the, did the money dance. Now the money dance oh, was okay, was, go there? was a topless no not money topless. dance. I would it, it looked no like, there were there were topless money dances. It, I remember it looked like um, I have pictures. It, there were you there do were, not have pictures. I took them quick. No, you didn't. Um, it looked like New Orleans. Okay, kids, don't get too excited. But I'll tell you the, that how, actually was all all anybody really needed. So that was fine. There you go. Everyone's going to do it now. So, you know, I'll tell oh, you. They are. Can you send a picture? <laughs> um, let me give you just hashtag no, uh, no, no, Rob, no. Rob's pictures. No, 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 no. So yeah, no, no. Oh my God. Okay. That's what Sophia so, calls boobies. No, no. Okay. All right. Are we off that one yet? Mm, yeah. Okay, good. So I'll tell you how committed I am to celebrating everything. It doesn't even matter. Like when he's talking about the money dance with the nanas, it could be $25. I am so like at the time we needed the money so bad. Our office wasn't doing great. And there was day after day after day of like no mail, no checks. And I was practicing being grateful for every single thing in my life. And to this day, if I see a penny or a nickel or something on the ground, I will pick it up and I will tell the universe I am grateful for that penny, as crazy as that is. So celebrate every single win along the way. So just to recap, be 100% honest with yourself about what you want. Manage your mindset and your manifestation. Take massive action and be comfortable getting uncomfortable. And then celebrate every single win along the way. And if you do that, Your dream, your real dream, not that BS dream that you've been chasing for no reason, your real dream will become a reality. And for anybody that is interested in making this transition and feel like they want a little bit of coaching, I've been helping some people go through some transitional periods in their life. So just go to workhardplayhardcoaching.com. By the way, how amazing is it that you're coaching people on creating transition in their life into a new chapter? Because that's actually what you did successfully. And so there's no better coach. Yeah, I didn't learn it in the book. That's for sure. There's no better coach than you. Well, that's it, everybody. We'll see you next week. All right. Thanks for listening. If you love this episode and you know someone that needs some help in either stepping up their work hard game or their play hard game, it would mean the world to me if you shared this podcast with them to help me get this movement out there. So if you like what you heard, head on over to iTunes, take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and I will be forever grateful. So until the next episode, excuses are over. It's time to live.